Hi, Brian. And if this is Brian Stout and Linda Bunnell, and we're here to talk about some courses that Brian is going to be offering coming uh, up here soon. And we wanted to, I wanted to just introduce Brian and just say that he's been teaching at the IHDS since 2015. He first got involved with human design in 2009. And he's, uh, he's one of my favorite people. He's a great teacher. He's funny. And I just love to listen to him. So Brian, uh, and for, for starters, he's going to be talking about um, the Rave Mandala, the, gar the Garden Path mm. Walkthrough, which sounds like a fascinating course. So Brian, go yeah. ahead, introduce yourself and go through the introduction. Yeah, thanks, Linda. You know, uh, boy, I love telling stories. I've got the channel, The Prodigal. So yeah, stories just come out of me. Uh, the quick history is this. Uh, when a friend of mine brought human design to me, honestly, initially, I thought it was just another profiling system. You know, you reduce people to a group of, you know, five things and that's it. Yeah. And uh, it took her a couple of times before I uh, actually got curious. But once I got curious, uh, I was off to the races. I was just off to the races. And I, in, in short, I just knew that my whole life had been leading up to this. Mm. And uh, to not pursue it would be almost a perpetration against myself. It was, you know, well, you're designed uh, to receive a calling and somebody yeah. come a knocking and they sure did. Yeah. And uh, there we are. And, yeah. you know, so early on, uh, even before I became an analyst, uh, of course, like everybody, I was listening to recordings from raw and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, well, as you know, Linda, there'd be so many times he's when he gets ready to refer to the mandala, yeah. he'll stop and, there's sort of this moment of awe and wonder mm -hmm. and he'll just say, you know, you really want to spend time with a mandala. There's mm -hmm. so much knowledge there. Well, I took him up on it. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, early, early, early on, uh, I don't even remember how long ago. It was at least 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I purchased that big work of his, the 16 faces of God. And I took a long weekend and I went to the mountains and that's all I did. I just listened to that recording for four days. Mm -hmm. And uh, as is true for me, uh, something sucked in somewhere yeah. and it's just been tickling with me the whole time. Mm -hmm. And it was just recently that I, I really felt called to uh, talk about some of the things I've seen. And that's this course. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Shall I go into it a little bit? Yes, please do. All right. Well, so we're all familiar with, if I can get my little thing here. Okay. We're all familiar with the body graph, of course, and we've got all the numbers of the gates in the body graph. But the thing that I'll bring people's attention to during this course is it's really not gate four. It's actually this hexagram. And it's actually the fourth hexagram of the traditional I Ching. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the basis of pretty much all of this when we look at the mandala, because when you look at the mandala, you start finding out that, well, gate four, this energy of the, the fourth gate is not just hanging out all by itself. It came from the energy of gate seven and is moving towards the energy of gate 29. And then it's also part of this entire quarter because if you look real carefully at all the hexagrams on this part of the mandala you'll notice that all 16 of these hexagrams have this yang over yin dynamic and so that tells us that this energy of this gate whatever the heck it ha happens to be has some sort of relationship to this entire group mm -hmm. and then when we bring in the third line and we get the lower trigram, we notice that, well, this gate four thing, this hexagram has a deep relationship to all eight of these gates. It's a very, very close relationship. So you start looking at relationships of these energetic frequencies, these archetypes 
within within the process. Mm -hmm. So there's this process is really what's being illustrated through each of these gates. And within a gate, of course, you have the lines and the various ways that they progress. And what we'll be looking at is how, well, these gates don't really exist on their own. Mm -hmm. At bare minimum, they're part of a quarter. In this particular case, is part of the quarter of duality where the purpose is fulfilled through bonding, crossing the barrier of separateness. So this youthful folly, this design of formulization, the energy to beguile and succeed despite ignorance, freedom from retribution is really part of this process, a really early part of the process of crossing this barrier of separateness. And really what it's really trying to do is come up with potential answers for the doubts that people have. That's its way of sort of crossing across. And so there's this progression of energy fields as we go from one gate to the next and we progress through these lines. This is the thing we're going to be looking at during this course. And we're going to start with this basic concept. So for today, if we actually just recognize that when we're looking at a gate, we're not looking at a thing. We're looking at a energy field. And within that energy field, there's steps. And you have six steps. And of course, each gate, each energy field has its own unique steps. But all first steps are foundational. All second steps have a certain projectural natural genius. All third steps are dealing with adapting and experimenting. Fourth steps are about getting the message out and externalizing. Fifth steps, right, universalizing the message, seeing the bigger picture. And then the sixth step is all about what's next, what's coming up. And all everything that's behind us is all very fine and good, but what's coming up? So when you start thinking of these gates as more of a trestle mm -hmm. in a garden, and this is where I came up the gardens, the, the garden paths that we walk through, is now you start recognizing a gate isn't a thing. It's more of an announce, it's more of a, an announcement. Okay, hey, mm -hmm. the, the process you're getting ready to go into is now called the army, the role of the self in interaction. And then you have these six steps. Mm -hmm. As you move from foundation to projection, adaptation, externalization, universal and translation or transitional, and then we get to the next garden trellis. Mm -hmm. And it says, okay, hey, you're getting ready to go into another garden. This garden is called youthful folly, formulization. But it's they're not the thing that I, I'm 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 gonna try to communicate in this course is that they're not disjointed, they're not separate, it's continual. It moves right from line six of mm -hmm. gate seven right into line four, or excuse me, line one of gate four. And it continues the progression. And then, of course, we get to the next gate, the abysmal perseverance, and it continues on this process. Mm -hmm. And so when we're looking at the mandala, what we're really looking at is the new life process for humanity. Mm -hmm. It's the cyclical process. Mm -hmm. And these cycles can be short. They can be long. Uh, it's cycles within cycles within cycles within cycles. And this is the clockworks of, of life. Uh -huh. And uh, so uh, I, I feel like I need to stop and just see if there's any question you wanted to ask me. I, 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 if I get going, I can just keep going forever. So I just I'd stop and just see if there was anything you wanted to ask or should I keep going? Oh, I think you should keep going, Brian. I'm Okay. Um, I'll just keep going. Yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So when we're looking at this mandala, there's structures and we're going to start looking at in this course, how these gates are related. And I'm going to play around with calling them gardens, just sure, just to try to get this idea of it's not a thing. Yeah, this gate thirteen isn't a thing; it's a garden, mm -hmm. and really, it's the pathways, it's the stepping stones within the garden that really starts getting into how one thing leads to a next. It's and we'll look at no, it's, what's it's that? A, it's a garden gateway. It, exactly. Yeah. And that's all that that gate is really 
saying is, hey, this is a this is a new garden. Mm -hmm. This is a new gateway. Mm -hmm. And we're going to look at why the mandala is separated into these four quarters, because there's an absolute structure there. And so we have these four processes and they each have their own dynamic. The first quarter over here on the left, this is where purpose is fulfilled through mind or inspiration, actually finding oneself in this new inspirational cycle that's not really initiated, it's, it's inspired. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the second quarter, the, the second process, which is all about, okay, well, so now we've got this inspiration. Well, now we got to express it. Mm -hmm. We got to bring it into the world. This is where purpose is fulfilled through form. Mm -hmm. And that form can either be physical or non-physical, but it's expressed into the world. And then once that's done, the next phase is the, where purpose is fulfilled through bonding. Mm -hmm. Really crossing that barrier of separateness and bringing it to the other. And then the fourth stage is transitional. It's mutational. It's basically wrapping it all up. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, well, that was great. What worked? What didn't work? What are we going to carry forward into the next process? What are we going to leave behind? And this could be a process within a particular dynamic. It doesn't mean when you stop a cycle that you start something brand new. It's just a new phase of the same whatever it is that you're experiencing. And uh, this is the most basic way of looking at the processes of life and sure. it, it, it could be any process and then we have and I'm, so i'm going to in the course i'm going to call these quarters esplanades mm -hmm. just because i like that I, I just like saying that I like I just that. esplanade it's just yeah. fun <laughs> and uh so they have a relationship all 16 of these gardens have a particular relationship within this esplanade. Mm -hmm. And then within the esplanade, there's four other groupings. Now, mm -hmm. Ra refers to them as faces. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where the 16 faces of God came from. Yeah. I'm going to refer to them as verandas, verandas, because I just, again, like the name. Yeah. And uh, so what we're going to find out is that these four gates are not random. There's a there's a definite structure based upon the hexagram for why these four gates are so intimately connected to one another in the process of life, the cycles of life, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And just as a little teaser, each one of the beginning gates of each veranda has significance, and I'm going to call it the portico. Mm -hmm. So each of these gates that begin a veranda kind of set up what that veranda is going to be like. Mm -hmm. And to a certain degree, uh, gate 13 or uh, garden 13 and garden 25 really set up the characteristics of this entire esplanade. Mm -hmm. And again, there's structures to these things that most people will probably recognize that gate 13 and gate 25 are in the G center. And that's part of what sets them up as having these key components, key characteristics mm -hmm. for what this quarter is all about. And so this is what we're going to be playing with is how one thing leads to another. There is an, another dynamic of where you bring in like a half of a quarter. It's getting a little bit precise, but we'll talk about that during the course. And I'm going to call that a colonnade, again, okay. just because I like the name. Okay. <laughs> Most of these, most of these names are just because, you know, I said Esplanade and my sacco went, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, veranda, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, it was a crazy process for coming up with these things. So I just want to touch on what happens when we bring the mandala to the body graph or the body graph to the mandala and enhance this story process of the mandala based upon the dynamics, the structures, the relationships we see in the body graph. And so for this first veranda, we have gates 13, 49, 30, and 55. And it's very interesting where they show up and how they show up. So we start off with this listener who is recognizing through how it feels over time, what's actually healthy for the tribe 
clinging to this fire for what's the new experience we're going to have and stirs up the passions. I think the most important thing, the beginning of all the processes is not in your head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's how does it feel? And Mm -hmm. what was that? What was that experience like? Right. Right. And so then that progresses to the next veranda that uh, continues on family and then it goes way up here to doubt and then grace and openness and then darkening of the light and so there's this okay all right so we're going to come together resolve the doubts that we might have waiting for the right opportunity waiting for the right opening to start something Mm -hmm. and that's always a darkening of the light Mm -hmm. Just before. That's where, all right, we're, we're inspired. We're getting ready to shift. And yeah. so now we come to my favorite gate of all. It starts off with innocence, the spirit of the self. Okay, I'm ready to go. I felt my way into this thing, but I'm starting off innocently. Mm-hmm. It's not contrived. Mm-hmm. It's just, I got to do this. And here's the structure that I I don't know if it's going to work or not, but here's the structure. Here's my opinion that resolves the doubts and has me be willing, willing to bite through to Mm -hmm. deal with whatever I got to deal with in the material world to arouse something, to initiate, not initiate like a not self generator, but initiate like leap into the void, like jumping out of the nest. And that's the third phase of this first first, uh, uh, esplanade. And then we're now, okay, we're getting ready to wrap this whole process up. And where do we go? We Mm -hmm. come down to the sacral three times. All right, well, hang on a second. Is there any really any creative energy for this thing? Is is there energy for this creative process, this new cycle that's going to bring order so that we can care for ourselves and others we're preserving what's been created before Mm -hmm. with a touch of inspiration Mm -hmm. a touch of that i just want to make sure i've got my gate keynote right yeah that rationalization that you know i don't know Mm -hmm. but man this really gets me going this idea let's see where it goes Mm -hmm. so this is for me this whole process of the first quarter this first quarter is Right. Well, I don't know, but let's see where this goes. And so when you, if you understand each of these components and how they're grouped together and how they fit into the process of life, you might have a way of understanding where you are in your own process. That's kind of wrap this up. This, that, that, that's what this, my hope is for this entire course right. is that you have an understanding of how this mandala process progresses. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the traditional I Ching, the way it's been used for thousands of years is you'd throw sticks or coins or whatever, and you'd come up with a random quote unquote hexagram. Mm -hmm. And then the I Ching professional would say, okay, well, based upon that, this is where you've been and this is where you're going. And it would give you kind of a bigger picture of where you were. Mm -hmm. And that's have been relevant for people, millions and millions of people for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. And in Ra's interaction with the voice, well, we have a new process. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's it's not just one through 64. It's a new process. Mm -hmm. So one of two things is how people could use this information, hopefully, when it's all said and done, is you understand where you're at in your own process for whatever it is that you're dealing with. You're either at the beginning over here in the first quarter, or maybe you're trying to bring it into expression, or maybe now you're trying to connect with others on the thing, or maybe you're wrapping it up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And if you can kind of identify that, you might have a bigger, a better idea, a better appreciation of where you're at and where you're going. Mm-hmm. Right. Or I think it would be completely g- legitimate to make it random. Mm-hmm. You know, make it personal. Like, uh, you know, there's the uh, the the gate cards that uh, the IHDS sells, right? Mm-hmm. That you can get the the deck of cards where mm-hmm. you know you've got all the gates and the descriptions and stuff. Well, you get yourself that deck and shuffle it, and you randomly pick up a card, 
contemplating whatever it is that you're working on mm -hmm. and see if that gate tells you something about where you're at in your process. Let's say that you actually do grab gate four. Right. Oh, okay. Well, I'm in my process of trying to bring it to others. And that's coming from this role of the self in its uh, influence with others. And now it's trying to resolve the doubts that others might have about this thing that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. And eventually it's leading to simply saying yes to the experience. And then it, it you know, the cards fall where they may. Mm -hmm. This is how I'm hoping people can use this, this knowledge. It's, it's more than just understanding the, the, this very intricate, intricate sort of, uh, dynamic of how the various gates are connected but it's also it's a kind of a different way of looking at how to use human design and actually bringing some attention to the mandala which you know very often is sort of overlooked or not really yeah. given its due you while, know? while you're talking i'm thinking in the back of my mind about you know where all the transiting planets might be in the you know in in the transit field at the time yeah. and what journey those planets are on as far as mm -hmm. where they're at in, in the transit cycle and how mm -hmm. and where that planet might be located within your body graph. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, just kind of another way it's, it, it can, you can take this many different places. It feels. Yeah. Well, for me, I think the most relevant use of that is the sun and earth transits. Because mm -hmm. the sun and earth transits are exceedingly predictable and mm -hmm. it's, it's an annual process. Right. And, uh, you know, there's a reason why when it's springtime, uh, you know, life gets a little randy. And mm -hmm. when you start looking at where that's it in the body graph, it makes total sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, you can, uh, 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 I'm still kind of making the, the, the slides and stuff for this presentation, but mm -hmm. there is a point of recognizing exactly that yeah. is now you understand because every single year, year in, year out, we have this transit field that is telling us the story. Right. And, right. you know, the moon of course is doing it every 29 and a half days, but that's a little hard to catch for yeah. just about everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, absolutely. The nodes is another, mm -hmm. you know, the environment that the nodes are creating because they hang around a lot longer than the sun and earth transit. So that can be fun. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. This is fascinating, Brian. All right. So I thought we'd go to the IHD website here and just show if you're interested how to uh, sign up for this. So just hang on for a second. And I'll bring that up. Here we are. So we're at the IHDS website and you can go under education to general and continuing education. And there's a bunch of general education courses here that you might want to check out. And here's this one, the Rave Mandala, the garden pass we walk through and hit details. And on the schedule, this tells you when it's, it's on Saturdays starting September 23rd, 1900 GMT. You'll have to translate that for yourself, wherever you're at on the planet. Right. Uh, and there's 10 classes. Awesome. Awesome. So anything else there then uh, for? Uh... Oh, I, I think you did an excellent job in introducing this and. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun for you to teach and it's going to be a lot of fun for oh. the people that attend. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm absolutely looking forward to it because I never know what comes out of me on these things. It, it's very <laughs> much like Raw's process. It's like, okay, well, I got a general idea, but let's see what yeah. happens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All yeah. right, Brian. Thank you so much. Thank you, Linda. Okay. Bye-bye.